Hey, this is Gabe Sabloff. I'm using Poser and I'm going to show you how you can set up a really great looking 3D illustration with um, very little time. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is open a new project. You're going to set up your preview dimensions and your render dimensions. A53 by 480, that's a good 16 by 9 ratio, but you can change it to whatever you want. And then you can set your render dimensions. Let's just set the render dimensions to match the preview window by by clicking on render to exact resolution then match document window A53 by 480 and say OK. Let's go into the library and grab a figure to use. So we can go figures, um, let's go to DAS people and the good old standby Victoria 4. We can load her up and it'll take a minute to load her. There she is. So let's zoom in on her. So let's go get her some clothes. Now in a separate runtime folder. These are my runtime folders here. I have Victoria 4 runtime folder and this is where I keep all my Victoria clothing, props and hair and accessories and all the things. So I'll go into Victoria 4 figures and I'll go down to this one, Fawn V4. That's a good it's a good looking like post-apocalyptic outfit. So I'm gonna load in the top, it'll appear there. And now I need to conform that to her to Victoria. So we do conform to Victoria 4. I'll get a little closer for the next one. The knee pads. They'll appear in the scene, but now they're, they're not actually attached to Victoria. So you actually have to conform to the figure. Conform to Victoria 4, OK. And you'll see them snap onto the model there. Now you repeat that process by importing all the different clothing figures and conforming them onto Victoria. So now she has her outfit on. I think this set also comes with a weapon, so let's go down to props and also find Fawn V4. Yeah, she has a gun that comes with the set, so this might load in as a smart prop. Yep, it loads in as a smart prop, so it's already attached to her hand. So when she moves her arm around, the gun will stay attached to her hand. But next stage, let's put some hair on her. Hair, um, this is a good one, April, and this one. So we import that into the scene. So the hair appears there. Let's go to the head camera. This is the camera that orbits directly around the head. And as you can see, the hair came in not quite lined up with their head. Um, so let's grab our parameter dial window, which you can under window, parameter dials. And this pops up, and here's the, all the um, parameter dials for that zilia hair. And so let's take the Y axis and raise it up. So that's good enough for just a quick render. Okay, so while we're here on the face camera, let's also take a look at what we can do to um, make her a little prettier. The standard Victoria face that comes standard on the model is pretty, but there are lots of morphs that people have made to make her really look a lot better. So let's go to one of my favorites here. So we go to Pose, where you usually find all these custom morphs, and this one, how about Sandra? So Sandra is a good looking lady that someone has built, someone modeled this. And let's double click on Sandra. And you'll see that, oh, this is the um, texture. So you'll see the texture first. And then here is the injection um, morph. So now we'll do the injection morph. And you'll see the model change into the Sandra character. So there, we have Victoria in her outfit with her custom made texture. and custom morph. The next thing we're going to do is give her a cool pose to be in. So let's go back to the Poser 7 runtime folder where I have stored a couple of custom made uh, poses. Now when you buy Poser it comes standard with a couple of poses that you can use for any situation. Let's just pick a cool one here. Let's go to the, this one. Let's go Gunslinger 2. And you click on the pose and she'll snap into her gunslinger pose. So now we have the model looking good, but now let's start to think about the photography. So let's go up to the lighting controls and I have one light here and it's set at 150% intensity, which is slightly which overexposes the texture slightly, which is good. So let's make that our key light and put that and rotate it around her just by moving the mouse until you find a nice spot where you see a lot of interest some nice light and shadow. Bring it down a little bit to so get the light in her eyes. 
move it over to get some nice shadows here on her stomach. That's good. We'll duplicate that light to keep all those same parameters of that light. This is an infinite light that mimics the look of the sun as opposed to a, um, like a spotlight. Um, so now I've created the second light. I'm going to swing it around behind her as a rim light. And let's go to the parameters of that light. We'll erase the X and Z rotate, so all we have is the Y rotate. So now it'll rotate exactly around, along the Y axis, and we can place it exactly. And what I'm looking for is to create a rim of light that separates her from the background. Good. So now we have the key light, we have the rim light, and now we have this black stripe of shadow that goes down her body like this. Let's address that by duplicating the light again. So again, it's just another infinite light that has that rotates along the Y axis. And we'll rotate that to there. And that's way too hot for a fill light. That's what we're creating here. So I'm going to turn that down to 30% just to fill that up. So you can see, if I turn it off and on, you can see the difference. It fills in that shadowy area, so it's not quite so black. Now let's throw some colors in there. Let's select our key light and we'll move it into like just a, like a nice yellow. Oh, and when you change the color, it also changes your intensity and by default back to 100, so let's pump it back up to 150. And the second light, let's change the color of it to the same kind of yellow, but much darker. Somewhere in there. That's nice. And that third light behind the rim light, let's make that really hot. Let's call that 300%. So it really, wherever it hits her, it just turns white. All right, so let's set the camera. Let's go to our dolly camera, which mimics, mimics the movements of a real camera. It moves like a dolly and pans and tilts like a dolly. There we go. And let's give her a telephoto lens. Right now we're at a wide angle of 20 millimeter. Let's go to a telephoto lens about 100 millimeters. And you can see instantly the camera zooms in to flatten out the planes of her, um, of her body here and makes it a much more aesthetically pleasing look. Okay, so I have everything the way I want it. Now all I have to do is render. So let's go to the render settings. And here is an auto and manual. We'll go to auto and crank the, do the uh, line all the way up to final. And then switch over to manual, do acquire from auto. So it brings in all those settings you, that you had over in auto. But now you can see them, what they actually are, so you can do modifications. And let's turn off ray tracing. Let's turn off all shadows and ray tracing, just so we can have a nice quick render. And let's do render over black. And um, bucket size. Let's do 32. We should keep it in a, um, in a factor of 16. That's it. So save that. Oh, and also we'll do texture filtering. I have a special little um, Python script here called texture filter which turns uh, texture filtering off and for the entire scene, okay. Good, so that's it. So now you just hit the button and render. And so you see at first it loads up the textures. This is doing it for the first time. So it takes a little bit longer for the first time you uh, render. Every time after that, the textures are already kept in memory. So it goes through this process much quicker. And so I had it render on black. So at first the whole screen appears black. And then as you can see, in little chunks, the renderer starts writing your scene. And so there you go. It's a pretty good looking render for just a few minutes setup and um, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. See you next time.